Hey guys, hello everyone and welcome to the channel. So I guess you already have seen the result. CSIR has already announced result for CSIR June 2022 exam. And in case if you have not uh, seen the result or in case if you have not seen the cutoff yet, uh, I'll give you a link in the description. You can reach out to the official website and check out the result as well as you can check out the cutoff of the exam, right? Now, uh, because the result consists of so many sections, like there are like JRF, UGC JRF, CSIR JRF, and there is a section, a specific section in the uh, in the CSIR JRF that is section uh, second part of section one. So, uh, and there are so many questions among students that what exactly it is, what is the number, like what is the CSIR JRF, what is UGC JRF, what is the difference between them. Then also we'll try to analyze that basically uh, how and whether there is any change in the number of seats or the number of JRF uh, from the previous year or from the previous exam, which was June 2021 exam. So whether the number of uh, JRF or whether the number of LS has increased or decreased uh, with, uh, with this particular result, right? So all these things I'm going to talk about in this particular video. So in case if you have given the exam and if you have qualified the exam, please watch this video. You might get to know a few more things. And in case if you were not able to qualify because of any reason, then also this video will make sense. It will help you to understand uh, for the next time when you will be applying and when you will be getting the result, it will help you to understand that what exactly the different section of the result actually means. All right. So I will start from the part that what exactly is the difference between CSIR, JRF and UGC JRF. So see, uh, this JRF is basically junior research fellowship and it is given to science student as well as non-science student. So non-science student for them, UGC takes care. UGC is basically a university grants, uh, grant commission. It's a, uh, it's an organization of Ministry of Human Resource and Development, which is basically responsible for giving fellowships, for giving certificates, for giving uh, various different perks for these JRF students, okay, for non uh, science student but in the science student since the number of student is so much uh, like the number of students so much high because we have chemical sciences life sciences mathematical sciences uh, physical sciences and then we have earth science earth and atmosphere sciences so we have so many students over here and that's why uh, and CSIR being a small organization compared to UGC it has divided the number of uh, JRF among them so Basically, science student are divided among or the JRF who are going to get in the among the science student, they are divided among CSIR and UGC. So non-science student only are eligible or they only get UGC JRF, but science student get both the things like they can either get CSIR JRF or they can get UGC JRF. In the result itself, it will be mentioned like there will be some roll numbers which will come under under CSIR net JRF. And there will be a section of, of roll number which will come under UGC net JRF. And if you will see the result, you will yourself see that the number of student under CSIR net JRF is very less compared to the number of student under UGC net JRF. And that is because, as I said, that CSIR is a small organization. It is less funded as compared to UGC. So that's why, uh, because the, this organization work is to provide fellowship, uh, to provide the uh, the scholarship to the students who those who have qualified JRF since UGC has a lot of funding so that's why it has a lot of students among uh, under it so that it can fund all of them and CSIR has limited number of students so that it can fund them properly right so on paper uh, there is no difference between them basically like all the perks of CSIR JRF are equivalent to all the perks of UGC JRF both of them are going to get equal amount of uh, money uh, throughout their fellowship their tenure is also roughly same there are some if and bits one or two points are above and below but those things are not like on a broader aspect you can say that both are equivalent to each other the only difference if you want to uh, see that is on the practical aspect uh, basically UGC JRF fellowship is more regular as compared to CSIR JRF fellowship although in the past six months I will say that CSIR fellowship has become a little bit more regular as compared to uh, like earlier so earlier CSIR fellowship used to be very like it used to get like the student used to get that fellowship a little late or like they used to get it in a delayed manner but now it is quite regular so now i will say that I, at the current scenario when i'm recording this video and whatever no, information i have according to that the uh, the uh, like frequency at which the student get fellowship is equal the amount which we they, which they get is equal uh, that is one thing which we have okay on the broader aspect both are quite equivalent one perk or one point or you can say one uh, one uh, benefit which CSIR JRF have is that if you are CSIR JRF and you want to do PhD 
in CSIR labs, in the CSIR labs which are there all over India. So if you apply over there and if you are UGC JRF and CSIR JRF, so there CSIR JRF are given a little bit more priority. Although it is not mentioned officially anywhere, but it is just the personal preference you will say that CSIR labs prefer CSIR JRF over UGC JRF. It's not like UGC JRF are not eligible for that. It is just about the priority. Priority is given to CSIR JRF. So this is just one point. There are more points on it. I will make a dedicated video where I'll talk about very small, small things which are different in both of them. But uh, as of now, on a broader aspect, I will say that both are quite equivalent. Either you get CSIR JRF or UGC JRF. That is not going to make very uh, a big difference throughout your PhD. So if you are enrolled into your PhD, you might be enjoying equal perks, uh, almost equal perks in both of them. All right. So don't worry. If you have got CSIR JRF, be happy with it. If you have got UGC JRF, be happy with that. Both of them are going to give you equal amount. Both of them are going to give you quite equivalent amount of perks. So no difference on the broader aspect all right so i hope this is clear to you that what exactly csir jrf and what is ugc jrf now let's talk about that what is section 2 in the result uh, of uh, or in the in the result of csir jrf okay so when you go to the result and you will see section 1 is your csir net jrf and if you scroll down a little bit, you will find out that there is a section 2, where are some roll numbers which are given over there. And there it is mentioned that these roll numbers are uh, for those who have applied only for JRF. Now, how a particular person will be applying only for JRF? Because once you apply for the form or once you fill the form, there are two options. One is uh, like JRF only and one is lecturership only. So in case if you uh, apply for JRF only and in case if you qualify the net uh, cutoff, but do not able to qualify the LS cutoff, uh, sorry, JRF cutoff. In that case, you will be considered as LS qualified. You won't be considered as JRF qualified. But in case if you have qualified JRF cutoff also, then you will be considered as JRF plus net. But if you read the uh, instruction or if you need, if you read the eligibility criteria, you will find out that even BSc third year students, those who are in BSc third year and those who are not enrolled into masters, they are also eligible to apply for CSIR exam they are also eligible to you know give this particular exam and those students are not eligible for ls they are not eligible for ls they are only and only eligible for jrf so in case if there is a someone who is in masters oh sorry who is in bachelor's third year bachelor's final year that person can also give this particular exam that person can also give this csir exam but if he qualifies JRF cutoff, then only he will be considered JRF qualified. He will not be considered as net qualified. So that section 2, which you are seeing in the result, uh, like that is section 1, second part of the section 1, where it is, there is uh, like this year, I guess there are uh, like 103 uh, roll numbers over there somewhere, somewhat around that. So those candidates or those number of students are those which are not J less L ls qualified they are not net qualified they are just jrf qualified that means they are meeting the eligibility for jrf but they are not meeting the eligibility for net for being qualified for net the minimum eligibility is to be enrolled into masters so in case if they are not enrolled into masters they are just bachelor's student they are just going to be considered uh, as jrf qualified if they qualify or if they pass the jrf cutoff okay so i guess that part is also now clear to you that section is for those students all right now let's talk about that what uh, what has happened or what basically is the difference from the previous csr net exam so i have written few data along with me so that i can refer to that so if you talk about a csir june 2021 which was the previous exam which happened which happened in the month of february i guess so in that exam if you see uh, csir jrf were 873 all right so there were 873 candidates which were considered as csir jrf this year result if you see this one that is csir june 2022 exam the csir jrf are 782 so that means you can say that number of csir jrf has decreased this time right from the previous year around uh, like around 90 students or 90 candidates have been decreased then if you look for ugc jrf so that is same for both of these exams 3300 UGC JRF candidates are there in both the exams previous year also and this year also that means there is no change in the number of candidates who qualified for UGC JRF all right then that section 2 which I was telling you that means those who are just uh, JRF qualified they are not uh, net qualified okay the one which I just told you about 
so this year there are 103 candidates whereas last year uh, or the last exam it was just 54 students so that means the number of students this time has doubled for that particular category total number of jrf if we talk about so total number of jrf in the previous exam in the june 2021 exam were 4227 right whereas this year total number of jrf are 4185 so that clearly means that the number of jrf has decreased uh, by 42 okay so there are 42 less candidates who have qualified for jrf this year and by the way whatever data i am telling you is combined data for chemistry physics life sciences all of these okay so this is a combined data which i am telling you uh, like because uh, csi don't publish separate data for C uh, for chemistry for physics and all so we have combined data so that's why we are talking about it in that way now let's talk about ls okay so in june 2021 there were 3452 ls qualified student whereas this year in june 2022 exam there are 4036 candidates who qualified ls so that means total 584 uh, like more candidates have qualified ls so we can say that the number of jrf has decreased a little bit by a number of 42 whereas the number of ls qualified student has increased by a number of 584 so that was the analysis of it i hope all your questions which were there around your result around uh, the marks which you have got or around the result which you have seen are answered if you have any specific question you want to ask me that you can ask in the comment section below i'll try to answer you over there itself and that's it from my side for this particular video thank you so much for watching and i will see you guys in the next one till then have a great day bye bye take care hey guys so i teach live on an academy plus platform here i teach for the csi ugc net category and you can follow me over here for regular classes you can access my free classes as well as my paid classes on this particular platform the classes which are free you can get that under the section of special classes whereas in order to access my paid classes paid live classes you have to take an academy plus subscription so do make sure that you take the an academy plus subscription to access all my paid classes which are quite organized the whole syllabus is being completed over there and the classes are quite regular over there so make sure that you take an academy plus subscription by using my referral code that is n underscore huda that's it for this thank you so much